how does faith happen? It's really an important question because without faith, there's nothing else that can happen between us and God. And when you start looking into how faith happens, we discover quite quickly that we really don't know. <laughs> but we do know that something happens in a person's life where God becomes real in their life. And because God knows us often better than we know ourselves, when that happens is different for every person. But I do think God sends messengers to us along the way. And perhaps we're not always ready to hear the messenger. And then some point in time, we hear. And faith, as St. Paul remarks, is a gift. Ultimately, it's a gift from God. And our Lord said, knock, it will be open. Seek, and you will find. If we don't seek or we don't knock, we're not going to find God in our life. And so I think it starts with that, seeking. A sincere seeking of, of God. Of, of knowing that God's real. We might believe that God exists in our minds. But have we met him? Has the risen Christ been made real to us in our lives? And I would say that's available to everybody. There's no one that's not available to. And so in the life of the church, we baptize infants from the moment they're born. And we don't say that uh, reason is a prerequisite for baptism. That the child obviously can't reason what's happening to him or her. But reason is made possible as a result of the baptism. Knowledge of God is open to us in a way it isn't before that. And so we have uh, Peter, this fisherman today, who we know the Lord calls him and immediately has this radical change in his life from being a fisherman and following the Lord. Certainly throughout the time of the, the days that Christ spent teaching his disciples, he talked about prayer. He talked about the Lord's Prayer. He, and at some point, probably after this, he said, you know, ask anything in my name and it will be given to you. So in this particular uh, 14th chapter of Matthew, it's just after the multiplication of the loaves. And when that happened, when, when thousands of people all of a sudden were miraculously fed on that day, all of a sudden, so many people were seeking out Jesus for the material benefits that he was providing. Look at this guy. He's a magician. He's providing for our everyday needs. And so many people were then really seeking him out for what physically he could give them. And regardless of not really seeing the miracle of the multiplication of the loaves, and when the church sees that miracle, we always say, well, that's pointing to the Eucharist. Jesus said, I am the bread of life, that we cannot have life without that bread within inside of us. And so after that, the Lord intentionally leaves his disciples alone and goes off to pray. And this is so important part of today's message. <laughs> Because that's also where we find our faith. We have to be alone and pray to the Lord. We have to find that time in our life where we can sit down and pour out our hearts, our challenges, our struggles, and our, especially our struggles with our faith. And him being alone on a hill praying like this, we can only imagine because he knows everything, right? So he knows what's happening out on the water with the, the men in the boat. He knows they're having a rough time. And I imagine that while he's praying, he probably was praying for them. And I think he was waiting for one of them to pray back. But they're silent. They're absolutely silent on this boat. Well, not sighing, they're screaming because <laughs> they're, they're periling and the, and the waves are crashing on the boat and they're really in trouble. These are, 
you know, experienced fishermen who know the sea forwards and backwards, and they struggle all night long, and they get about three miles away. <laughs> they can't get across to where they needed to go. And at no time do we hear them sitting down. Maybe we should call upon the Lord. Maybe we should call upon the Lord. No. Then all of a sudden, they see an apparition, what appears to them to be a phantom walking on the water. You think they were terrified before, fighting the wind and the waves and everything else, and all of a sudden they see something walking on the water? Well, we would just think that's it, right? We would just, well, what's this now? They're, they're absolutely mortified. And then he calls out to them. He lets, he calls out to them, it is I. But he doesn't just say, hey, it's I. <laughs> he uses this phrase, Eroime. It's the most simple Greek phrase you should know. It means I am. And in fact, that, well, I won't go into that. Never mind. But some heretical groups today mistranslate the I am of Jesus. Because when he says I am in the, uh, I think it's the 8th chapter of John, they pick up stones to stone him because he's using, the, he's calling himself by the name of God. The name that Moses asks for. And so he's here, another Moses on the water, walking on the water. Moses parted the Red Sea. Jesus is walking on top of it. And they're understanding in this one instant that indeed it is the Lord. And but, but and as soon as he says that, then Peter asks for his permission to leave the boat. And he uses a word, kelafson, maybe some of you are familiar with that word, that means order me, it means command me. Well, there's this time we use kelafson is during an ordination of a priest or a deacon. The bishop will be at his throne. God willing, we might see one of these ordinations this year. Pray for that, please. And they say to the bishop, kelafson, command, order. In other words, I am ready to obey whatever you say. I am giving my life to you as a soldier gives their life to the general. And so that statement from Peter then becomes really powerful. <laughs> He's just saying, you, you say it, Lord, and I'll do it. I'll obey. It's, it's an incredible deepening of his faith in that moment. So deep that he, he gets out on the water and he starts walking, you know. And it's funny because you don't know what the other disciples are. Like, the, the wind's still blowing. The waves are still crashing. They've still got a problem with the boat. And, and Peter's out into the water walking to Jesus. And, and we know what happens, right? In that moment, all of a sudden, he takes his, his eyes off of Jesus. But the fathers point out here that why did Peter want to do this? Did he want to see another miracle? They say no. He wanted to be with the Lord that, in such a strong way that he didn't care. And, and for him to not even think about what he was about to do, right? He just gets out and starts walking. It's incredible that he's able to do this. He doesn't think about it, doesn't reason about it. He, he just it's, takes a leap of faith and jumps in. Faith is like that. We do things that don't make sense, that even the laws of nature somehow can't even validate what we're about to do. And I, I just finished writing an article about sort of the building of this church and all of that. It's so it's fresh on my mind, but no one thought a hundred people could raise $1.1 million and plant a shovel in the ground and make this church a reality. But that's all it was. A hundred people. That defies logic. 
certainly a business uh, advisor, a financial advisor would say, no, you guys aren't ready to build anything. Based on your giving, because it no, they, they predicted maybe four times your annual giving. We gave 12 times our annual giving to make the church a reality. When the, when the laws of, of nature are overcome, faith comes together with Christ and he becomes everything. And so we must seek that in our life. If we want more, <laughs> and, we, and Peter thought he had great faith. So many times he said so amazing things, but he still wasn't perfected in his faith. And I don't think any of us are ever perfected in our faith. But Jesus allows us to be alone on the, war, on the storm of life. And he's just waiting for us to call out to him, save me. I'm someone in need of salvation. I'm someone in need of you to give me life because outside of Christ there is no life. He is the bread of life. He is the good shepherd. <laughs> and he is always for us trying to build our faith from where it is and take it to where a place we can't even imagine. We cannot imagine. And when I hear this... <laughs> This calling of Peter, second calling of Peter, I think I can't believe that I'm here as a, your priest at all. It's really miraculous that I was called to this path. It wasn't in my genes, it wasn't in my genetics, it wasn't in my family. Well, maybe it was my yaya, certainly had incredible faith. But I was going down a totally different path in my life. And God sent messengers I began to think more, and finally I asked the question, God, do you really exist? Let me know. It's that simple. <laughs> but it's that hard, because you've got to be in a place in your life where you want to hear the answer. You're ready to hear the answer. And if you hear the answer, then you've got to respond. You can't just say, oh, that was neat. <laughs> you've got to say, oh, now, now command, Lord. You order me, and I'll obey. To God be given glory. Amen. <clears throat> you descended from on high, O compassionate one. You submitted to a three-day burial, that you might free us from our passions, O oh.